Toongrin.com. Hey, if you're like me, you kind of noticed that in some of the recent movies, they tried to sexualize Velma so she didn't remain in that stigma of the nerdy bookworm. Well, counter productivity away! <laughs> oh, now on to the review. Well, Velma being a fat, disgusting cow aside, we are on to the, the second last Scooby-Doo movie, released at the time of recording, Big Top Scooby-Doo. Now you all know the drill, on to the story! It starts out with Fred dragging the gang out to see the circuit, much to their annoyance. But when they arrive, they are soon attacked by a werewolf! The ringleader of the circus, Wolfric von Reidensvard, played by Peter Storm, tells the gang that the werewolf has been stalking the circus wherever it goes and steals priceless jewels. These jewels, in fact, are connected with the myth of the werewolf, specifically this one guy turning all these other people into werewolves with these magical gems. So the gang decides to investigate undercover once again as circus performers, but will they fall victim to the werewolf menace? Or will their standard subplots be too standard to stand? Now animation-wise, there isn't any difference. At all. There is no artistic flair that elevates this movie to stand out from the last three. Except the bright contrast of colors on display, and being a circus setting and all. But the art isn't bad, obviously. The artists have reached the point where they can be tossed any sort of story and they can put pictures to the words. Now, for the future, it's all about figuring out ways to expand out of that box. The story, on the other hand, needs to go to its room and learn how to not be predictable and cliché. Let's start with the worst one, Velma's plotline. First off, friend and mentor character trope. My god, you guys really need to stop doing that one. Second, you seriously couldn't think of anything better than she's afraid to go into the cannon and must learn to face her fears to be shot from it. Woo! Madagascar 3 had the same plot point with Marty and the Italian seal, and they did that so much better. At least in that, there was more and integrated into the movie than just having, I'm scared, look, bad guy, I'm ready, boom! The whole thing is just rather token, completely uninteresting, and distracts from characterizing one of our suspects. And really that can describe the rest of the character's side plots. Fred having the jealous little man, Daphne with the clowns, which I have to admit gave birth to the second sexy looking clown I've seen in animation, the first one obviously being the Joker, and Scooby and Shaggy with the whole what you're taking credit for what I do plotline that completely cast the animal trainer into the garbage. These are roads so often traveled that Fred should just set up a freaking toll booth. Now really, a lot of movies, shows, and such are based on identical ideas. The differences are found in the framing and execution, and Big Top just does it in the most bland, played out way possible. Very disappointing. Now the werewolves, despite some tad inconsistencies with the culprit sizes throughout the movie, which I won't fully spoil why that's an issue except for that little hint, the werewolves are fierce looking but... eh. It's just like in Music of the Vampire, fierce looking character, rather goofy design, with all of them having long flowing Fabio hairdos. It makes them look like wannabe headbangers at a metal concert. But everything ain't crud. While everything is on the standard plane, nothing is really implemented all too bad, except for the Velma plot. And the mystery is on the same level as the most mediocre What's New Scooby-Doo movie. I mean, for even a Scooby-Doo mystery, it is so straightforward, it's an insult to mysteries to call it a mystery. Even the end film twist is about as shocking as the sun rising. The premise of the film is good, I can't fault it for that. Acrobatic werewolves terrorizing a circus sounds like a lot of fun, 
Unfortunately, the idea isn't pushed far enough to make the movie worthwhile. Music of the Vampire at least pushed the stupid musical vampire premise to the limit. Big Top is just standard, safe, and worst of all mundane in comparison to the rest of the newer Scooby-Doo movies. It feels like it's going through the motions in a sense. Despite that one, I would almost say piss in Producing weird scene with Scooby. I won't spoil context, but dude, can I borrow your shades? No. Other than that, there isn't anything extraordinary about the movie. The quality and storytelling is becoming a lot more basic again, just like with the What's New Scooby-Doo movies. That's not something I want, and I'm sure a lot of kids don't want that either, because those movies for the most part were just mediocre. Mediocrity shouldn't be something to shoot for, but I'm sure the team behind these movies love what they do, love the story, characters designing all the locations and such, but there is a big problem. They're working way too fast. For the past few years, they have knocked out a Scooby-Doo movie every year, and it's well known it takes a hell of a long time to animate just one scene in a movie, let alone a full movie. I would really want the team to maybe take a year more with each project to work out all the story hiccups, experiment with different animation players, and such to create a fully realized story, mystery, and world. Just because Scooby-Doo is for kids does not mean you should try any less harder to create a fun and fleshed out war movie. Other than that, Big Talk Scooby-Doo is... Eh. With a few weak plot sheets, but nothing awful. Just relatively unremarkable. Get the movie if you're... Eh. But if you ain't, don't. Mr. Ink! Mr. Ink! They help me out a lot! Scooby and some other guys and I said I write the bizarre 